Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Thanks for listening. I'm your host, Ken Sherman. My guest today is Joyce Petrowski. Joyce is the CEO of Furnishing Dignity. After serving in a food bank, Joyce recognized a need that simply isn't provided for by other community resources or programs. Furnishings, for those aging out of the foster care system or coming out of homelessness. Furnishing Dignity fills a large gap in our community that directly affects the lives of their clients. Let's jump right in and speak with Joyce about her business. Tell me a little bit about who you help in your business. Who is it that, you, that you're helping primarily? Is it, is it foster kids coming out of foster system or is it homeless people or who is it that you're helping? We help the recently homeless and the foster youth that age from the system. So we help them with when they get into their permanent places, uh, usually apartments. We help outfit that whole apartment with gently used furniture that we've recycled from the community. So it keeps it out of the landfills as well. We, but we do buy brand new beds and bed pillows for our clients. We do not recycle uh, used mattresses. And you're 100% on donations. So those mattresses you're purchasing, I'm guessing you've worked out something with, you know, with some mattress companies that are <laughs> kind enough to maybe discount those those mattresses in some way. And, and but you're you're really relying on the donations to to help do that, aren't you not? Right. So we rely on donations, individuals, corporate uh, grants, and uh, we do fundraising events throughout the year as well. But yeah, we have a um, mattress manufacturer in Phoenix that we work with and they give us a, a huge uh, discount. Um, they work directly with companies. They don't sell to the public. So uh, we get to, we get them, you know, at a wholesale cost. Yeah. That's great. So Joyce, how'd you get started in this business? Well, I was just uh, volunteering uh, my time at a local dining hall and befriended a lady there who was living on the streets. And I went in one day to help serve, it was either breakfast or lunch, and they told me they were able to get her into a low-income senior citizen apartment. And my next thought just automatically went to, well, what furniture does she have? She just carries this rolling suitcase with her wherever she goes. And um, they were able to help her out with, um, with a little bit. But then I just went home and, and emailed friends and family and asked them if they had things they wanted to don you know, that they were getting ready to donate that they hadn't donated yet. I would come pick them up and uh, we were able to outfit her apartment and we had some left over for the rest, you know, the rest of the people could look through in the apartment building and then got sought out a few times from a lady at church to help out. And I just thought to myself, why do people keep asking me? I'm just one person, you know, don't, don't these other, you know, nonprofits have this as a program. And, and uh, so I called around and did some research and found out that it's just not one of the programs that these other nonprofits offer. So a few friends and I started furnishing dignity. It's interesting. You know, a lot of people wouldn't think about it, but people aging out of the foster system, while they might get into some housing, you're right, they don't have any furnishings, not even a bed in a lot of cases. I think that's a misconception in the Valley. We've had a lot of volunteers that have gone on moves with us, that they come after the move. They were just flabbergasted that people were living with nothing in the apartment. It's just, I think it was, it's more of an assumption. It's something that everybody thinks, well, you know, once you get into a place, you're just going to get furniture, uh, whether it's at a thrift store, whether it's new or from a furniture store, however you get it. But when you're talking about, you know, people that are starting over again from being homeless and foster youth aging from the system that are, this is the first time they're actually out on their own, their money is really tight and their budget is stretched thin. And even if they had, you know, some money where they could go buy a couch or, you know, a kitchen table or something, you know, from a thrift store, how are they going to get it back to their place? Not only financial, you know, areas of being able to afford all the furniture, but there's logistic issues on being able to get it back to their place and and all that. So for people that don't receive this kind of help, I mean, I, I guess the, the question I have is how do people know about you? How do people that are aging out of the foster system, how do they find out about furnishing dignity? And what happens to all the people that don't receive your help? Because my guess is you're not getting to everybody, right? 
script, we are not getting to everybody. We work directly through other nonprofits in the Valley that work with the foster kids and also work with the homeless population, whether they're in shelter or they're in, you know, one of their programs. They know about us, the ones that we have partnerships with, and they refer their clients over to us. You know, we're just not uh, strategically yet at a point where we can serve everyone in the Valley, you know, and the whole Maricopa County. Um, That is our goal down the road is we want to be able to expand our boundaries to be able to serve more and have the necessary um, operational capacity to be able to serve more people. How long has Furnishing Dignity been around? Well, we started in, at the end of 2014, and the first six months was really getting everything set up and the website and, and social media, and we did our first move on July 4th of 2015, so it's been about, uh, it's about six years. That's great. You mentioned that you really rely on donations to support your clients and whatnot. Do you, yes. you also mentioned that you do some events throughout the year. Do you have any events coming up? We do. We have a Game Night for Good a charity event coming up. It's going to be at the end of March, and it's on our website under Game Night for Good. And um, what it is is it's a virtual event. And we've contracted with video chat game show guys where it's a virtual like trivia. You're on Zoom, but you're playing uh, trivia and some other games. And um, it's, it's going to be a 70s and 80s uh, retro edition. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can wear your seven favorite 70s and 80s costume. There's going to be music. We're going to, you know, have the, the trivia competitions. We're going to have some prizes. We are also have a 50-50 raffle. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. That sounds like a lot of fun, you know, especially in this uh, this COVID environment we're in now and everyone's sort of sheltered at home. Uh, everyone's looking for fun ways to do things at home, and uh, it exactly. sounds like a good time. So, Joyce, what are maybe some of the other misconceptions about what you do or what Furnishing Dignity does? What we found um, in the last six years is we do deal in gently used furniture, you know, in the Valley, and that's fantastic because if we didn't get the furniture donations – we wouldn't be able to turn around and give those uh, to our clients, but we also rely on the financial donations. That's what helps us be able to go pick up the furniture and bring it back and store it and clean it and process it and inventory it and pack it and sanitize it and get it ready to move out and take it over to the clients and, and get it all set up. So I found over the, the last few years that there's been a uh, misunderstanding. You know, people look more, you know, look to us for donating furniture, but don't quite understand why we need the financial donations as well. And, you know, I equate us to a food bank. You know, if if you're giving food to a food bank, if they didn't have the financial donations to move the food all the way through their system and into their client's hands, then the food would just sit there. Well, that's the same exact thing with us. If we don't have the financial donations to move that furniture all the way through our system and into our client's hands, then the furniture is going to sit there and it's not going to do anybody any good. Well, even worse than that, uh, my guess is if you're collecting all of this furniture, you need some place to then store that furniture and that storage isn't free, I'm sure, right? Right. Uh, so right. there's there's some fixed costs involved in your business that, that have to exactly. be covered with donation. Makes total sense. Exactly. So Joyce, for people that want to maybe donate financially or, or donate furniture or things like that, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you or to, to submit a request? If you want to donate uh, furniture or household items, the best way to do that is through the website. If you go on there under Ways to Help and then Donate Furniture, we have a form on there that you can fill out. And when you hit the submit button, it goes to the appropriate person that will then help you get that scheduled or help you make an appointment if you're going to drop some stuff off. We also have, if you want to volunteer, we also have a page under that same tab to volunteer, and it has a calendar with our dates, and you can sign up directly through there to volunteer. And it also gives you Tamara's email address to contact if you have any questions about volunteering. You can do the financial donations through the website as well. 
We have the Arizona Tax Credit, which we're a qualifying charitable organization for, up to 400 for individuals and up to 800 for couples, um, which you can still do right now for 2020. Um, and just um, can register for the events there. You can make the tax credit donations. You can make uh, monthly, do- monthly donations through our Heart and Home Squad and just a regular financial donation. But, you know, with anything that's going on Furnishing Dignity, if you ever have any questions and you want to reach out to me, I'll be here uh, to answer your questions. You can reach me via my email, which is Joyce, P as in Paul, so J-O-Y, C as in Cat, E as in Edward, P as in Paul, at Furnishing Dignity. Dot .org or you can call 480-340-3417 and hit extension 2 to get to me. So Joyce people can volunteer, they can financially donate or they can uh, perhaps donate some furniture. Are there are there any other types of donations that you accept? Yes, uh, absolutely. We uh, we take um, stock. So if you have stock that you have a uh, a gain on if you were going to sell it you can donate it to us and then you uh, get a donation for the value of the stock uh, when you donate it if you're taking qualified payments from your ira we could work with that as as a charitable donation Uh, if you have a retirement account that you don't necessarily need when you retire you could put furnishing dignity on there as a uh, beneficiary and we also we are also set up uh, to take vehicles. Uh, we are set up through a uh, company that you would just need to schedule them to come out and pick up your vehicle and tell them that you're donating it to Furnishing Dignity. They will take it and they sell it through their auction, and then Furnishing Dignity gets a portion of those proceeds. Uh, we are also part of Amazon Smile and Fry's Grocery Store. To get a percentage of those, you just need to select Furnishing Dignity as your charity of choice. That's great. There's a lot of ways people could be donating and, and helping out. Uh, and yes. many of them are even passive, right? Just just by going to the grocery store, which all of us do, uh, we right. could be helping. Right. That's fantastic. Right. Well, Joyce, thank you so much for being on the show today. I appreciate you taking the You're time welcome. out of your out of your day. I've heard your, your email go off there a few times. I know people are trying to reach you, and, uh, yeah. and you're, you're doing good work out there. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.